Hi there. It's been a long time. I decided to upload some new content, specifically with my newly installed Bell fiber internet connection to my house. So anyway, uh, let's get to it. By the way, I'm going to be making a video on how to do PPoE on your PFSense box to bypass the Bell GigaHub. That's going to be coming hopefully soon. But yeah, let's get to it. Let's get to the sauce or the source. So this is the fiber cable that enters my house and basically there is no demarcation point outside the house. The bell technician didn't have any. So this is the exact same cable that runs out of the ground box into my house. And this cable is basically three cables in one, depending how you look at it. I'll talk about it in a minute. And this cable is really stiff. And it's like that for a purpose because you don't want the, you don't want the technician or the construction crew to damage the cable. Because if you bend this cable too much, the signal will get really weak on the other end of the cable or you can snap the core fiber inside basically and you're gonna have bad time with that so anyway i have a service loop outside i have a service loop well i have a service loop on the inside i have a service loop on the outside uh it comes into this bell box that doesn't close us because that's not the proper way of installing this because this box is not rated for this kind of gauge of a cable if you look right here this is the little opening where the cable is supposed to go in. Yes, you can, you know, break this off and close it. And yes, another thing, I'm not happy with this bend. The belt technician messed this up. I told him, don't do that. Some of these cables, you can kind of bend like this, but it's still not recommended. The best thing would it be if you went straight and just looped around and I'll actually redo this eventually. And if you look closely enough and you literally have fiber cable inside of a fiber cable inside of a fiber cable basically so three cables and yeah back to the the cable so we have a sc connector terminated to this fiber cable goes into this coupler and exits well goes to another coupler i mean not coupler uh, another sc connector onto the cable and basically into the modem or the giga hub in this case and that's basically it and actually one thing i want to point out it's actually nice i don't have a coupler on the outside of the house or slash demarcation point because every time you have a demarcation point you have a coupler is because every time you have a coupler it doesn't matter what kind of coupler fiber coax or a connector you're actually losing a signal string actually so that's a nice thing that i don't actually don't have that so it's kind of an advantage for me but if bell ever has to test my fiber they have to go into the house unplug my giga hub or unplug this uh, fiber from the box and connect their testing tools to test uh signal string and upload, download, all that other stuff. Now, let's talk about the Giga Hub itself. At the front, you get basically four buttons. You get this uh, restart button, navigation key is okay. You get uh, another restart button or reset button. Now, if I look behind, you get your fiber connection right here. There is no removable SFP transceivers or SFP plus transceivers specifically because this is a 10 gigabit fiber using, well, the speed here is 10 gigabit. Uh, using GXP PON standard, 10 gigabit symmetrical upload and download. This service is particularly three gigabit upload and download. You get your wall mounts. I think there's a bracket in the box. I haven't looked. You get your serial number, your MAC address. You get your 10 gigabit Ethernet port right here. Right now I have my PFSense box connected. Uh, you can connect your computer to this if it has 10 gigabit or it's also backwards compatible with slower speeds. I don't remember the whole list, but it's 5, 2.5, and 1.25, and 1 gigabit. I'll have the specs on the screen. You get your 1 gigabit LAN ports as well. Uh, these are also uh, 100 and the 10, I believe. Uh, then you get your uh, jacks for your phone service. I'm not sure what the technical name for these are. Basically, if you have an old phone like this, or you can you know, connect your whole house to an AT adapter that I have right here. You can you know, use phone service with Bell. And then I have a DC jack right here. Here's the big power supply. This is actually, if you're curious and you wanna power this with DC directly, this is 12 volts at five amps, but always test the output voltage because in my experience, it might say 12 volts right here, but in reality it could be lower or could be higher in my experience. And that's it for the back of the unit. You have a cable stress relief. I don't know if I already mentioned that. 
that's it for this section. Forgot to mention, you also get USB on the side. But anyway, let's talk about the front keys here. So the moment you press this key, you grid with an LCD screen. Uh, you can reset the unit. I'm gonna say, okay, for now. Also, uh, if you have all blue, that means you have internet service. If it's, I don't remember the actual color code. If it's like red or orange, you have no internet service. So the moment I hit my navigation keys, you're presented with this menu screen right here. So you can see the service status. The service status kind of lies. Uh, I experienced I would have no internet service, but it would still say service. I think it just says what service I have that I'm paying for. Here you can see your Wi-Fi name and password. This option you use to connect Bell's uh, TV boxes or TV receivers. Basically, Bell has uh, TV over internet. It's kind of bad implementation compared with Rogers has. Rogers has a way better implementation of their IPTV service. And yes, this falls asleep if I don't do anything to it. Then you have this Easy Connect uh, WPS option for Wi-Fi devices. Do not use this, disable it. It's a bad idea, it's a security issue. Then you have the password for the web interface of the modem. Basically, it's your serial number. Then you can run a speed test. Uh, and this is kind of a biased speed test, I would say. I presume this is using Bell servers to run a speed test, not like speedtest.net or any other third parties. Then you have your option to do default, you know, factory reset. If you want to, you know, change everything back to default, obviously, if you mess something up, you want to use this option. And then you have your, I presume this is to change to French. And then you have the close option, basically shuts off the screen. And that's basically it, really basic unit. Uh, most of you should not be using this at all for natting in some cases. But uh, natting meaning, I'm trying to say, you shouldn't be using this as your router, basically. You should be using your own router. And yeah, that's it for now. Thank you for watching and I'm out of here.